we are going to solve a problem on finding the transfer function of a control system using the block diagram reduction technique. So this is our question and it is the block diagram of the system for which we have to find out the transfer function. So let's solve this problem. We can see that there are no blocks which are connected in series or in parallel in this block diagram. So we have to move any of the summing point or takeoff point so that the blocks they come in series or parallel combination so if we move this takeoff point which is before this block g3 to a position just after this block then these two blocks g2 and g3 they will come in series so let's shift this takeoff point from the position before the block to after the block. So when we are shifting it, then we have to divide this transfer function of the block G3 from this H1, okay? So H1, uh, here we will move this takeoff point to this and the transfer function will be changed to H1 by G3. So let's apply this rule. This will become H1 by G3 and this takeoff point will come here. So we have shifted this takeoff point here and the G3 it is divided from G1. So we are getting H1 by G3 here and G2 and G3 they have come up in series. So we can solve this. We can we have we will multiply these transfer function that is G2 G3 and there will be a single block here. So let's apply the series combination rule. So we have multiplied and this has become G2, G3. Now you can see that 
these two blocks that is G2, G3 and H2 they are forming a feedback loop. So we can apply the feedback rule here. So let's do it. When we apply the feedback rule, then the resultant transfer function will be G2, G3 upon 1 plus G2, G3 and H2. Okay. We can split this, this block H1, G3, it is being applied to this summing point also and also it has been applied to this summing point. So we can break it. So if we see this G2, G3, this block and this block, then we can see that these two blocks, they are in feedback with each other. That is, they are forming the feedback loop. So we can reduce this feedback loop by applying the feedback rule, which says that this is GS and this is HS. So the resultant transfer function will be GS upon 1 plus GS HS because it is a negative feedback loop. So let's apply the feedback rule. So we have eliminated the feedback loop and then after eliminating we see that these G1 and this block they are in series with each other. So we can multiply these two transfer functions and reduce it to a one block having the transfer function as the multiplication of these two blocks. So let's apply this series combination rule. We will get this as G1, G2, G3. These denominator terms, they will be cancelled and G3 and G3, it will also be cancelled because it is common here. So we will get this as G1, G2, G3 divided by 1 plus so we have combined these two blocks, we have multiplied their transfer function and then we can see that these two systems, they are forming the positive feedback loop, okay. Here we are having a positive sign, so it is forming the positive feedback loop. So its transfer function will be GS upon 1 minus GSHS. Okay, because here we are having plus sign. So in the transfer function, we will have minus sign. So let's eliminate this positive feedback loop.
So this is the resultant transfer function and in this we can cancel this G3 and G3 because they are, it is present in both the numerator and denominator. So we can see that this block and this block they are in parallel combination with each other. They are forming a parallel combination. So we will add their transfer functions. Okay. So we will get the resultant transfer function as this is G1, G2, G3 upon these denominator terms they will be cancelled and we will get 1 plus G2, G3, H2 plus G2, H1 minus because here we are having minus sign so it will be minus G1, G2, H1. So C by R will be equals to Okay, so this is the transfer function of the control system given to us and it's a solution to our question. I hope you have understood the problem clearly. Thank you.